Hey everybody and welcome to the 8th episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half-Life. In the previous episode, we learned how to create stairs, ladders, and lifts to allow the player to travel to different heights in our level. In this episode, we're going to be learning the basics of a new type of entity called scripted entities and how to use them to control the monsters in our level. Before we begin, I have created a small 256 by 256 unit test room with an info player start, light, and Barney monster entity positioned on one side of the room. Let's begin by using the entity tool and creating the first of the two scripted entities called the scripted sequence entity. The scripted sequence entity is a powerful entity. It can target a monster entity and command it to move to its location, as well as make it animate a specified animation. This entity is not only responsible for the story, but for the death scenes in Half-Life as well. Let's start using the scripted sequence entity to do something very simple, like making our Barney entity travel across the room. Taking a look at its attributes section, there are several new options we haven't seen before. But in order to make Barney walk, let's just focus on these settings first and come back to the remaining later in the episode. Let's start with the name option. Our scripted sequence entity needs to be activated in most scenarios by a button or trigger entity. Let's add the name SS01 to this option so later we can make a trigger entity and add this name to it. The next option is the target monster option. This is where we place the monster entity's name we wish our entity to command. Let's add the name Barney01 to this option for now and add this name later to our Barney entity. Now that our Barney's soon to be name is added, Let's move on to the Search Radius option. The Search Radius option determines how large of an area in units it will search for our target monster entity in order to issue it commands. This option is useful when wanting the player to find scientists and bring them close to locked doors to open. For this option, let's keep it at its default value. The last option for now is called Move to Position. The Move to Position option controls whether or not our target monster entity will move to our scripted sequence's exact location when activated. This means wherever we position our scripted sequence entity, as long as it's within our search radius, our monster will travel to it. For this episode, let's choose the Walk option and position our scripted sequence entity on the opposite side of the room from our Barney entity facing the info player start. Now, that's all the settings we need to adjust in order to make our Barney travel across the room. But before we can test this out, we're going to need a button or trigger entity to activate our scripted sequence and we will also need to add the name Barney01 to our Barney monster entity. Let's create a thin AAA textured block across our room positioned slightly in front of the info player start. Then transform this block into a trigger once entity and add our scripted sequence's name SS01 to its target option. Once finished with our trigger entity, let's open up our Barney's entity browser and add the name Barney01 to its name option. And that should be it. Let's press F9 to test this out in game. Great job, we've successfully used a scripted sequence entity to make Barney walk across the room. Now, in order for us to continue on to the next part of this episode, 
we're going to need to download a new program called Jed's Model Viewer. Yeah, I'll wait here. This program allows us to see all the animations each monster has available to them and can be used inside of Jack as a plugin. Download this program by using the link in the video description and install the files into your Jack plugin folder. Once downloaded, go back into Jack, click on Tools in the top left toolbar, and select Options. Then, click on the Game Profile tab and then on Directories. In the Model Viewer location, click on the three dot icon and navigate into your Jack plugin folder where we installed Jed's Model Viewer. Select the hlmv.exe file and exit the options window as our plugin will be now ready for us to use inside of Jack. Now that we've got Jed's Model Viewer downloaded, Let's continue to use the scripted sequence entity, but this time, let's make our Barney animate after walking across the room. Let's begin by right-clicking onto our Barney in the 3D viewport. A new option will be available to us called View Model. This option opens up Jed's Model Viewer and is very convenient to have integrated into Jack. Let's click on the View Model option and the Jed's Model Viewer program will open. The program window will appear showcasing the Barney View Model with several tabs below. Each of these tabs allows us to see the different components that create the View Model, but let's just focus on the Sequence tab. The Sequence tab contains a drop-down box that allows us to see every Barney animation that our Barney monster can do in-game. Selecting each option will display our Barney performing the animations as well as show the information about each animation. The main purpose of using this program isn't just to view the animations, but also to see the animation's names displayed. We will need to copy our chosen animation's name into our scripted sequence in order for our entity to command our Barney to perform the chosen animation. For our test level, let's use the Pepsi Push animation because it's kind of extreme and will also let us know that our animation is working. Once ready, we can exit or minimize out of Jed's model viewer and open up our scripted sequence entity. The last two options we haven't covered yet is where we can enter the name of our animation into. These options are called action animation and idle animation. The action animation option commands the target monster to perform the chosen animation once. This option will work with all animations and needs to be activated by a trigger or button entity. If we have the Move to Position option enabled, then our action animation will be performed after our monster entity is done traveling. As for the Idle Animation option, this option will automatically, on level load, command our monster to repeat an animation until either the action animation is activated or by the player's or other entity's interactions. This option will only work with a select few animations and does not work properly if the Move to Position option is enabled. We can use both the action animation and idle animation options together or separate. For this episode, let's enter our animation's name, Pepsi Push, into the Action Animation option. Now that our animation is entered into our scripted sequence entity, let's press F9 to test this out. I'll be happy to survive this with all my parts. Good work, we've learned how to make Barney move and perform an action animation. 
We are now ready to move on to the last scripted entity we're going to be learning this episode, called the scripted sentence entity. Roger that. Let's run like hell. The scripted sentence entity can target a monster entity to say a chosen audio line when activated. Hey! Hey, over here! Eat lead, you outer space octopus! This entity is used everywhere in Half-Life to deliver story, objectives, and even dark comedy. Let's use the scripted sentence entity to make our Barney say an audio line after he's done traveling and animating. I would really like a cold one right now. To start, let's create a scripted sentence entity using the entity tool. There are plenty of useful options we can configure in this entity, but let's start with the sentence name option. Like the animation options before, we're going to have to find out the name of the audio clip and add it to this option. To find the name, let's navigate into our Half-Life Sound folder directory. Here's an example of where it should be located on your computer. In the sound folder will contain a text file called sentences.txt. Open this up and a notepad full of text will appear. This text file is full of sentences names from all the monster entities. But to quickly navigate in this, press Ctrl F to bring up the find option. Type Barney into the find option and press the enter key. Our page will jump to the first instance of the name Barney. This section is a catalog of audio clips or sentence names for the Barney monster entity. To understand what exactly we are seeing, let me explain. The all caps name on the left is the sentence's name. The middle portion is who is saying it and also what folder in sounds to find it in. Finally, the last portion is the .wav file name. For this episode, let's choose the sentence name ba question zero. Now, if we wanted to hear this sentence, we will have to go back to our Half-Life Sound folder. Besides the sentence.txe file, there are a bunch of folders here, each with a different monster or classification. Since our sentence is from Barney, let's click and enter into the Barney folder. In this folder contains all the .wave audio clips from Barney. To find the exact one we're looking for, let's use the sentence information displayed in our sentence.txe file. The .wave file's name is Beer Topside. Scroll down until you find it and double click it to play it. You think there's a cold beer for us at the end of all this? There we go, that sounds about right. Now, before we exit out of this, let's quickly glance at how long in seconds our audio clip is. This is important to remember and add into our scripted sentence entity so our audio clip isn't cut off prematurely. Let's exit out of the audio program, then return back into Jack and enter into our scripted sentence entity. Add the name ba question zero into the sentence name option starting with an exclamation point. The exclamation point is needed in order for our entity to work properly. Once added, let's change the value of our sentence time from 3 to 2 seconds to match our audio clip length. Now that we entered in our sentence name and time, let's add the name sentence01 to our scripted sentence name 
and continue with the rest of our settings for our scripted sentence entity. The speaker type option is where we place the monster entity's name who we wish to say the sentence. In our case, let's add our Barney monster's name, Barney01, into this option. The listener type option is who we want our monster entity to be looking at when saying the chosen sentence. We can add any monster entity's name here for our Barney to be speaking to, but for him to be speaking to us, the player, all we have to do is add the name player to this option. We also have a couple sound options, but these are fine at default settings. Now, the last setting we are going to need to enable is located in the flag section called the interrupt speech option. This option will force our Barney to speak immediately when triggered to do so instead of waiting for the next opportunity after his idle voice chat. Let's click and checkmark this option. And there we go, our scripted sentence is all set up. All we need to do now is figure out how to activate our scripted sentence entity right after our Barney is finished with his traveling and animating. Instead of using some complex setup of triggers, we can simply enter into our scripted sequence entity and add our scripted sentence's name, sentence01, to its target option. The target option of our scripted sequence entity will only be activated once our Barney has finished his final task. This option is incredibly useful as it saves us a lot of time, effort, and our sanity. Now that everything is set up, let's do a final playtest and see if it works. I'd like to get my hands on the guy responsible for this mess. You think there's a cold beer for us at the end of all this? Congratulations, you've learned the basics of scripted entities. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope it helped you. As always, if you have any problems, please be sure to ask me in the comments below, and I'll try my best to help. I will see you next time in the ninth episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half-Life.